Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Divya Jyoti Das and this is For the Love of Physics. In today's lecture, I'm going to demonstrate some very important consequences of relativity using space-time diagrams. The consequences of relativity that I'm talking about are relativity of simultaneous events, time dilation, space contraction or length contraction, and relativistic addition of velocities. Now, if you are familiar with special theory of relativity, then you may have heard of these consequences and you may have also seen their proofs using either Lorentz transformation equations or some sort of a thought experiment. What I am going to do here today in this lecture is I am going to provide you an alternate approach of demonstrating the same phenomena but using space-time diagrams. As you will see today that using space-time diagrams these simple consequences of relativity can be demonstrated in a very simple, straightforward and elegant manner. Now, if you do not know what space-time diagrams are, I have made two lecture videos previously talking about Minkowski space-time extensively. I have talked about what Minkowski space-time is, how we can construct it and what is the difference of Minkowski space-time from normal Euclidean space. If you do not know what are the peculiar properties of Minkowski space-time and how it is different from Euclidean space and the calculations that we perform in Euclidean space, then you should probably check out those two videos first because that will provide you the necessary basic concepts that I'm going to use today to demonstrate the consequences of relativity. And if you have watched those lectures, then let us start. So first I'm going to demonstrate the relativity of simultaneous events. What does that mean? Well, it simply means that if there are two observers and one observer is moving in some relative velocity with respect to another observer and they are both looking at two physical events. If for one observer both the physical events are simultaneous, it does not mean that the events will be simultaneous for the other observer as well. And it can be demonstrated quite simply using the space-time diagrams. Let me show you. All right, so here I have um, the space-time diagram corresponding to two observers. All right. Um, just like in my previous lecture, I took the example of Batman and Superman. So let me take the same example here. Let's suppose that Batman is at rest uh, in his mansion. He's resting, he's enjoying his life. And I want to look at the space-time diagram with respect to Batman. And let's suppose that Superman is traveling at a very high speed with respect to Batman. So he is going to be our second moving observer. All right. So usually when we perform these calculations in the textbook, uh, the first observer is known as observer that corresponds to the S frame of reference. And the moving observer usually corresponds to the S dash frame of reference. So let me specify that uh, I'm considering Batman uh, to have the S frame of reference. All right. And I'm considering that Superman, which is moving at a velocity of V, very, very high velocity with respect to Batman, he corresponds or he has an S dash frame of reference. Now, to simplify our calculations, I am only considering one dimensional motion. Therefore, the space time diagram consists of just one space dimension X and the other is the T dimension, which is represented by CT here. So, for Batman, the space axis and the time axis are perpendicular to one another and Batman's world line, since he is at rest with respect to himself, is this. This is the world line of Batman. So let me just stick it here. Okay. Now Superman is traveling at very high speeds. As I have discussed in my earlier lectures also, the world line of Superman with respect to Batman will be inclined at a particular angle. Okay. Because as time goes on, he is traveling at very high speeds. He has a world line that is inclined to the time axis of Batman by a particular angle. And this angle is, uh, let's suppose, phi. Now, I have demonstrated this in my earlier lecture that if we are comparing the relative velocities between two observers, so that one observer is traveling at a velocity of v with respect to the first observer, then 
the way the space time diagrams are connected to one another is v upon c is equal to tan hyperbolic phi so tan hyperbolic phi which is this angle is related to the relative velocity of both the observers using this particular expression i have demonstrated this in my earlier lectures as well so when we compare batman and superman who is traveling at very high speeds then their space time diagrams or axes are inclined to one another with an angle phi such that tan hyperbolic phi is equal to v upon c now as you can see here superman's time axis is this and his space axis is this so in a way there has been a rotation of both the time axis and the space axis of superman when compared to the time axis and the space axis of batman this is the peculiarity of uh, lorentz transformations in minkowski space time now what happens if both of these two observers look at two physical events that are simultaneous with respect to one so let's suppose that superman who is traveling at very high speeds looks at two events which are simultaneous according to him then what is going to happen well let me draw a line a line which is parallel to the x dash axis here and let's suppose that there are two events that superman measures or observes which are given by these two points so let me say that this is point p and this is point q now the time axis of superman is going in this particular manner and if you look at the time components of both the event p and q with respect to superman then they correspond to ct dash p for the p event and ct dash q for the q event which are exactly equal all right so c t dash p is exactly equal to c t dash q from where i can conclude that c t dash p minus c t dash q is equal to zero it simply means that the physical events p and q are simultaneously with respect to superman I'm going to say with respect to S dash. All right. Now, if I want to compare the time coordinates of P and Q with respect to Batman, then I'll have to look at the projections of P and Q onto the time axis of Batman itself, which is parallel to the X axis. So in the case of Superman, the projection was done parallel to the X dash axis. But in the case of Batman, the projection will be done by a line parallel to the X axis. So I'll draw a line somewhere here. And then for the uh, event Q, I'll draw a line, something that looks like this. So as you can see from this diagram, the time corresponding to the event P is CTP for Batman and CTQ for Batman for the events P and Q uh, respectively. As you can see, this difference is non-zero. That means... Uh, I can simply say that C T P minus C T Q is not equal to zero. As you can see, it's not equal to zero. And I can conclude that P and Q are not simultaneous with respect to S frame of reference so even though both the events are simultaneous with respect to superman they are not simultaneous with respect to batman in fact the event p happens first for batman and the event q happens later on but if you look from the perspective of superman the event p and the event q happen at the same time so this is the relativity of simultaneity which says that if for one moving observer, two events are simultaneous. It does not mean that for another inertial observer, those two events will also be simultaneous. In fact, for the other observer, one event happens before the other event. Okay, so again, we have the same space-time diagram of Batman and Superman who is traveling at very high velocities with respect to Batman. And this simply represents a Lorentz transformation of a moving observer as opposed to a 
observer at rest okay so this angle is let's suppose phi and their relative velocities are given by 10 hyperbolic phi is equal to v upon c now superman is traveling at very high speeds and this is in fact the world line of superman with respect to batman batman is at rest in his mansion superman is traveling at very high speeds you know flying at speeds comparable to the speed of light now let's suppose that uh, superman is wearing a watch okay he is wearing a watch as he is flying through space and we are going to look at the configuration of his watch and how the dial ticks okay now we can take some other example also maybe he is holding a light and or a torch and he switches on the torch twice to represent two physical events we can take any example but for the sake of simplicity because i want to demonstrate that time dilation has nothing to do with the nature of the physical event itself but it is a consequence of relative motion therefore let me take the example of a watch that superman is wearing and the watch is going tick 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 all right so let's suppose then when the watch reaches a particular configuration when it let's suppose ticks at 12 i go call that as physical event p okay after some time the watch or rather after one second the watch ticks one second and i call that as physical event q okay what is physical event a it is simply the configuration of the watch at a particular let's suppose value and when the dial goes one tick I call that as physical event Q. All right. So essentially, I want to measure the time period between these two configurations of the watch according to Superman and according to Batman. And that will tell us how time measured by a moving observer and the time measured by an observer who is looking at the watch travel at very high speeds are not exactly equal. All right. Are you understanding the setup? The setup is very simple. Superman is wearing a watch. He is traveling at very high speeds. When the watch is at a particular configuration, I call that as a physical event A. When the watch ticks and it reaches another configuration, I call that as physical event Q. I could have taken any other example also. Let's suppose Superman is holding a torch or a bulb, switches it on physical event P, switches it off physical event Q. That is also another perfectly valid example. Now, if we're going to look at uh, 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 the time period difference between these two physical events, so with respect to the S dash frame of reference, what is the time period difference between P and Q? Well, let me say that the time at which physical event P happens with respect to Superman, I'm going to call that as C T dash P. And the time at which physical event Q happens is C T dash Q. C T dash Q minus C T dash P is equal to C T dash Q minus T dash P. This is the time period between the configurations of this watch according to Superman. Now, whenever we measure time uh, with respect to a watch which is at rest, we call that time period as proper time period. Okay, so whenever physical events are happening one after another and we want to measure the time period between them, uh, if the physical events are at rest with respect to the person who is making the measurement, then that is what is known as proper time interval. And if you make a measurement with respect to physical events that are moving with respect to you, then that's not proper time interval, that's relative. Okay, so because it is a superman's watch that is ticking and he is the one making the measurements of the time period between these two configurations so i'm going to call this as a proper time interval proper time interval is usually uh, written as del t naught so del t naught is the time period between these two physical events of the configurations of the watch but measured by an observer who is at rest with respect to the watch itself all right so this is c t naught or c del t naught between p and q now what if batman is also looking at how superman's watch is ticking and he also wants to measure the time period 
difference between one configuration and another configuration of the watch. How is he going to measure the time period difference? Well, for him, the physical event P happens at C, T, P, right? And the physical event Q happens at C, T, Q. All right. Now, what is C, T, Q minus C, T, P? I'm going to call that as according to the observer. In S frame of reference. If you look at this particular diagram, you will see that I can draw a line parallel to the CT axis. Let's suppose this is that line parallel to the CT axis. And I call this point as PQR, right? Now, if you look at the diagram, the angle that PR, which is parallel to the CT axis, makes with PQ, which is along the CT dash axis, is nothing but this angle phi here okay so let me redraw this triangle by the side okay so in this particular triangle if you look at the angle this is the angle phi what is pq pq is nothing but this okay pq is ct dash q minus ct dash p which is c del t naught so pq is nothing but c del t naught however what is uh, PR? What is PR? PR is nothing but uh, CTQ minus CTP, which is nothing but CTQ minus TP, which is nothing but C del T. Okay, I'm going to call this as C del T. So this is C del T. So PR is the C del T and PQ is a C del T naught. Now, how are the sides of a right angle triangle related to one another in Minkowski space time? Now, this is something that I've demonstrated in one of my earlier lectures where I obtained this expression. I showed that the projections of a, a particular vector onto any kind of an axis uh, in Minkowski space time is not the usual sine or the cosine, but instead sine hyperbolic and cosine hyperbolic. So if you look at this particular triangle, if you look at this particular triangle, if I want to relate PR and PQ, then PR is equal to PQ cos hyperbolic phi. Okay. PR is equal to PQ cos hyperbolic phi. This is the peculiar nature of the way space time is constructed that whenever you take the projection of any line segment or a vector onto an axis, the projection will include a component which is neither sine theta or cos theta, but instead sine hyperbolic theta and cos hyperbolic theta. This is because whenever we construct the Lorentz transformation of a moving observer, those Lorentz transformations are actually the hyperbolic rotations in space time. And it comes from uh, that nature of the construction. So if PR is equal to PQ cos hyperbolic phi, then PR is nothing but C del T is equal to PQ is uh, uh, nothing but C del T not cos hyperbolic phi. What is cos hyperbolic phi? Well, I can demonstrate what cos hyperbolic phi is here. Let's suppose I have already said that tan hyperbolic phi is equal to V upon C, right? In that situations, tan hyperbolic square phi is equal to V square upon C square, right? Now, what is tan hyperbolic phi square? 1 plus sec hyperbolic phi square, right? So I can say that 1 minus 10 hyperbolic phi square is equal to 1 minus v square upon c square. This is nothing but sec hyperbolic phi square is equal to 1 minus v square upon c square, which can be rewritten as sec hyperbolic phi is equal to root over 1 minus v square upon c square. But what is sec hyperbolic phi? It is 1 upon cos hyperbolic phi. Therefore, cos hyperbolic phi is equal to 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. All right. So this is the expression of cos hyperbolic phi. So if I use this expression here, then 
Of course, there is a cos hyperbolic phi term here. I'll end up getting 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. The c and the c gets cancelled out. And finally, I am left with a relationship between the time period measured by Batman and the time period measured by Superman, who is a moving observer, which is del t is equal to del t naught upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. This is the famous expression of time dilation that gives us a relationship between the measurements of the time period corresponding to two different observers. So if Batman measures the time period of P and Q and Superman measures the time period of P and Q, their measurements will be related according to this particular expression. So as you can see, they are not equal. That means the way the Superman's clock is ticking and the way Batman perceives Superman's clock to be ticking are going at different rates. Time as it appears to Batman is moving slower for Superman. This is the very famous time dilation phenomena as demonstrated by a space-time diagram. I hope it is clear to you. So let's move ahead to the next conclusion which is length contraction or space contraction. All right, again, we have the same space-time diagram of Batman and his mansion and his uh, space-time axis and Superman traveling at very high speeds near the velocity of light and his uh, time and space axis. And their velocities or relative velocities are related to the angle of inclination here uh, with phi uh, such that tan hyperbolic phi is equal to V upon C. Now. I want to look at how the measurements of distances are related to one another when uh, we compare the measurement of a distance of made by Superman and Batman. So let's suppose that as Superman is flying through space, he is holding in his hand a meter rod. Okay, he is flying through space holding a meter rod. Okay. Uh, and he's, he, he knows the length of the meter rod. So what will be the length of that same meter rod? but with respect to Batman. Okay, it sounds simple enough. So let's suppose <laughs> that uh, 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 Superman's meter rod, as he is holding and moving at very high velocities, occupies a distance in x-axis, right? Let's suppose from zero to x is equal to one meter, all right? And I show that using this simple line. So I draw this line from, uh, let's suppose, uh, I call this one end uh, of the scale as P and the other end of the scale as Q. Okay, this is the meter rod that Superman is holding as he is traveling at very high speeds. So that means the meter rod is also traveling at very high speeds with respect to Batman, yes? So at time t is equal to zero, the meter rod is here at P and Q at time t, let's suppose one seconds before, zero, the rod is behind a little bit. So if I draw the uh, world line corresponding to both the points, so the world line corresponding to Superman's trajectory or the end point P of the rod is this and the world line corresponding to the meter scale and its end point Q's trajectory will be something which is parallel to the time axis of Superman, something like this. All right, so this is the world line of the end point of the meter rod, and this is the world line for the other end of the meter rod. So let's suppose this is point P and this is point Q, and uh, the world lines are the, the points, end points, how they are tracing a trajectory through space time. So that means if the meter rod was here at time t is equal to zero when P is at the origin, then a moment before that, let's suppose, the meter rod was somewhere here when Q is at the origin. Okay, so, so, so as time goes on and on, the meter rod is also tra making a tracing a, a world line like this. So the endpoints of the meter rod are also tracing uh, two world lines just like this. Okay, so, so this is at two different time intervals when uh, uh, this is let's suppose uh, P, uh, P naught and this is let's suppose uh, Q naught. So clearly uh, the meter rod 
when p is at the origin of the time axis and when q is at the origin of the time axis are not exactly the same because both the endpoints are not necessarily simultaneous for both the observers. So if the measurement of both the endpoints is simultaneous for Superman, it is not necessarily simultaneous for Batman. So we will need to find a situation in which the measurement of the endpoints of the rod is simultaneous with respect to Batman himself. Because uh, the length of P and Q, let's suppose, with respect to a Superman is del L naught. Why? Well, this is a proper length, right? If I am holding the scale and I am traveling at very high speeds, so the scale is also traveling with me at very high speeds. So the length of the scale with respect to me is the proper length because the scale is at rest with respect to me. No matter how fast I am traveling, the scale is always at rest with respect to me. Therefore, this length that I will measure will be the proper length. But if another person is measuring the length of the same rod, when the rod is traveling at very high speed with respect to that person, then his measurement will not be the proper length. His measure will, measurement will be the relative length, right? So for him, I need to make sure that whenever he measures the endpoints of both the rods or the positions, he needs to do it simultaneously. This is very important. Now, why? Let me give you a very simple example that if there is some kind of a car and the car is traveling at, let's suppose some velocity, non-zero velocity, and you are here and you try to measure the length of this car, okay? You want to measure what is uh, uh, the length between these two points, P and Q. Now, it is very obvious that if the car is traveling at a very high speed, then you need to measure these two endpoints at the same instant, right? If you don't measure it at the same instant, what is going to happen is that after some time, the car would have traveled some distance and let's suppose you measure the endpoint at one instant and the other endpoint at another instant. So what you end up measuring is this length. This length is the length of the car, but it also includes the length of its uh, trajectory. Yes. So are you understanding what I'm saying? If you want to measure the length of a moving body, then you need to measure the endpoints simultaneously. Only then you will measure the length of the object. Otherwise, the length that you measure for a moving observer at two different points, it will also include some part of its trajectory. I don't want that. Right? Therefore, if I want to measure the length of the car, I must do so simultaneously. Same way, if Batman wants to measure the length of this rod which Superman is carrying in his hand, he must measure the endpoints simultaneously. What does it mean simultaneously? It means that the endpoints must make the same component in the time axis of Batman. So the one endpoint of the rod is P, the other endpoint of the rod is Q0. Both of them have to be measured simultaneously by Batman. Only then we will know what is the length of that scale with respect to Batman. Man. So are you seeing what I'm saying? Well, we are trying to correlate the measurement of the rod uh, with respect to Superman, which is del L naught, and the measurement of the rod with respect to Batman, which is nothing but P Q naught. So here, with respect to S dash frame, that means with respect to S dash observer, which is Superman, P Q is the length of the rod, which is nothing but del L naught, that is a proper length. But with respect to S frame, that means with respect to Batman, P Q naught is the length of the rod, which is nothing but del L. That is the relativistic length. Now, of course, it is clear that they are not equal, that there is some kind of a contraction which is happening, right? As you can see, there is some kind of a contraction that is happening. But I want to quantify this relationship. I want to find out what exactly that relationship is mathematically. So to do that, let us look at these two triangles, okay? I have uh, this triangle P, Q, naught, and let's suppose this is point R, and P, Q, R. Let us look at these two triangles, all right? So first, let's look at P, Q, naught, R. So in this triangle, P, Q, naught, R, clearly, you can see that this world line of point Q and this world line of point P, uh, they are parallel, therefore they, these two angles are same. So this is phi here, okay? This is phi, this is P, this is Q naught, and this is R. Now, this is 
a simple triangle uh, with respect to the Batman space-time. Now, let's look at P, Q, R. Let me draw that first. So, this is the triangle P, Q, R. P, Q, R. Now, they look different, right? Uh, it looks a little different here and it looks a little different here. Let me explain the reasoning what's happening. You see, we are not dealing with usual Euclidean space. We are dealing with space-time. Uh, and when we compare the time and the space axis of the moving observer, uh, what you see is, this is the space axis of the moving observer and this is the time axis of the moving observer. They are not exactly perpendicular to one another, right? they are not exactly perpendicular to one another visually speaking when i draw them in a board but the way this construction is made is so that if i have a line segment along the time axis then the projection of this line segment onto the space axis will be zero and if i have a line segment along the space axis then the projection of this line segment along this time axis will be zero this is because a vector along this time axis and a vector along this time axis, they have a dot product of zero. That means they are orthogonal to one another. That means they are perpendicular. So perpendicular uh, in our usual day-to-day -day calculations in Euclidean space simply means a right angle, right? Perpendicular in our usual Euclidean space simply means right angle. But in this kind of a construction, perpendicular or orthogonal means that the dot product or the inner product of two vectors is zero. So the way this is constructed is that if I have some kind of a vector along the time axis and if I have a vector along the space axis, their dot product will be zero. And essentially their uh, 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 lengths are such that they are orthogonal to one another. So that means this line, which is the world line of point Q and this line, they are orthogonal to one another. See, this line is parallel to the time axis of Superman, yes? And this line is the space axis of Superman. So this vector and this vector are in reality orthogonal to one another. That means the projection of this vector onto this vector is zero. So keeping that in mind, this is PQ and QR and how it looks if I represent that orthogonality with a right angle. So even though this is not very obvious, uh, all I will say is that it is the peculiar nature of these space-time diagrams that especially when we look at the space-time diagram of the moving observer, we have to be very careful of how we take the projections of any line segment or a vector. And they follow the, you know, hyperbolic Pythagorean theorem. So uh, the, 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 the vector which is parallel to the time axis of Superman and the vector which is on the space axis of Superman are in fact perpendicular to one another even though it doesn't look like that in this board. But if I take a, 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 some sort of a vector along them and I do some dot product, I will end up getting zero. So what does it mean? It simply means that I just want to find the relationship between uh, 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 PQ and uh, QR. Okay, so what is it that I want to demonstrate? What is PQ0? PQ0 is del L. What is PQ? PQ is nothing but del L naught. And in these triangles, uh, I can say that del L is equal to del L. I can say del L is equal to Q naught R, Q naught R sine hyperbolic phi. Okay. Q naught R sine hyperbolic phi and similarly del L naught here is equal to PR sine hyperbolic phi PR sine hyperbolic phi okay now that I have written these two expressions for del L and del naught here let's come back to this diagram and look at the triangle P Q naught R okay in the triangle P Q naught R uh, it is quite obvious that PR is equal to Q naught R cos hyperbolic phi, right? Q naught R cos hyperbolic phi. Now, what is 
PR. Well, PR is equal to del L naught upon sine hyperbolic phi. So this is equal to del L naught upon sine hyperbolic phi. What is Q naught R? Q naught R is equal to del L upon sine hyperbolic phi. This is equal to del L upon sine hyperbolic phi and then again here we have the cos hyperbolic phi term. So the sine hyperbolic phi, sine hyperbolic phi gets cancelled. What is cos hyperbolic phi? Well as I have demonstrated to you in the previous expression for time dilation, cos hyperbolic phi can be written as 1 upon sec hyperbolic phi, right? Sec hyperbolic phi can be written at sec square root over sec square hyperbolic phi root over sec square hyperbolic phi can be written as root over 1 minus 10 hyperbolic phi square now what is 10 hyperbolic phi v upon c so this is nothing but 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square so if i substitute that expression here i simply end up getting del L is equal to del L is equal to del L naught and here from here I'll have 1 minus V square upon C square. This is the space contraction or length contraction in relativity. So it says that the length as measured by Superman which is del L naught and the length of the rod as measured by Batman, which is del L, if the rod is traveling at very high speeds are related by this expression. So the measurement of the distances between any two points in space are not the same for two different observers, they are different. So if two observers are in relative motion, the measurement of distances for them between the same two points is different. And that can be very simply demonstrated using the space time diagram itself. All right, to demonstrate the relativistic addition of velocities, I have three different observers traveling at different velocities, okay? Now in day-to-day -day life, whenever we compare the velocities, we use simple addition and subtraction. For example, if I am on the road, I see a car traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, uh, then that's the relative velocity between me and the car. If there's an aeroplane traveling at 500 kilometers per hour with respect to me, then the velocity of the aeroplane with respect to the car will be 500 minus 100, that is 400 kilometers per hour, as simple as that. But what if we compare the relativistic velocities at speeds comparable to the speed of light? So we have Batman and his space and time axis, Batman is at rest in the mansion. And with respect to Batman, you have Superman who is traveling at very high speeds and his space and time axis are given by the red lines. And let's suppose that the angle that uh, this makes is phi such that 10 hyperbolic phi gives us an idea about the relative velocity of Batman and Superman upon C, okay? Now let's suppose there is another very fast observer. Mm. Let's suppose we have uh, someone from Dragon Ball Z, like Goku or someone who can travel at near high speeds, okay? I don't have a, a cardboard print for him, but let's imagine that we have uh, Goku from Dragon Ball Z who is traveling at even higher speeds compared to Superman so that this new space-time axis corresponds to him, okay? So let's say he is uh, this guy, okay? He's traveling at very high speeds and he has a velocity with respect to Superman and that angle is given by theta, all right? So we have three observers. One is the Batman, his space-time axis. One is Superman traveling at very high speeds, his space-time axis. And third is the Goku from Dragon Ball Z, his space, uh, his time and space axes, okay? Now I'm going to compare the relative velocity. To do that, let me define a few quantities. So um, what is the speed of S dash frame of reference with respect to S frame? I'm going to call that as V, okay? What is the speed of S double dash axis or S double dash frame with respect to S dash? What is the speed of Goku 
with respect to Superman, I'm going to call that as U dash. Okay. And what is the speed of S double dash with respect to S? That means what is the speed of Goku with respect to Batman? That is something I don't know. I want to find out their relationship that I'm going to call as U. Okay. So V is the velocity of Superman with respect to Batman. U dash is the velocity of Goku with respect to Superman. I want to find out U, which is the velocity of Goku with respect to Batman. How can we do that from the space-time diagram? Well, it is much easier than you would have thought. As you know, or as you have seen till the discussion till now, the relative velocities are given by the angles of the time axis. So if I have the time axis of one observer and the time axis of another observer, the angle that it makes in the space-time diagram is gives us an idea about the relative velocity, right? So if I'm interested in finding out the relative velocity between S double dash observer and S observer, then I only need to look at this angle. What is this angle? This is theta plus phi. That's it. Theta plus phi will give us an idea about the speed u, which is the speed of Goku with respect to Batman, if I take 10 hyperbolic. So if I take 10 hyperbolic theta plus phi, that will be u upon c. That's it. That's it. This is the relativistic velocity addition. Let me just write down the individual terms and expand it, okay? What is 10 hyperbolic a plus b? Well, we can come up with it from the trigonometric expressions. Well, that is nothing but 10 hyperbolic theta plus 10 hyperbolic phi upon 1 plus 10 hyperbolic theta, 10 hyperbolic phi is equal to u upon c, right? Now, what is 10 hyperbolic theta. 10 hyperbolic theta gives us an idea about the relative velocity of S double dash with respect to S dash. So what is the relative velocity of S double dash with respect to S dash? It is U dash. So this is U dash upon C. Okay. What is 10 hyperbolic phi? 10 hyperbolic phi gives us the relative velocity of S dash with respect to S. That is V upon C. So if I plug all of these values, I get u dash upon c multiplied by v upon c is equal to u upon c. So here c and the c's gets cancelled and finally I come up with the expression that u is equal to u dash plus v upon 1 plus u dash v upon c square. This is the expression corresponding to the relativistic addition of velocities. If you are familiar with these expressions, you may have seen this in the inverse relationships, okay? So if you want to find out u dash, u dash is equal to u minus v upon 1 minus uh, uv upon c square. And if you want to find u, u is equal to u dash plus v upon 1 plus u dash v upon c square, okay? So if you want to find u dash, it is nothing but a simple subtraction. That's all, nothing else. So you can prove that in a very similar fashion. So this is the relativistic velocity addition that we can obtain between uh, three different observers who are in relative motion. So u is the velocity of Goku with respect to Batman, u dash is the velocity of Goku with respect to Superman, and v is the velocity of Superman with respect to Batman. This is the relativistic velocity uh, transformations in special relativity. So as I have demonstrated in today's lecture, we can use simple Minkowski space-time diagrams to demonstrate some very elegant uh, conclusions of relativity, namely the relativity of simultaneous events, time dilation, length contraction, and relativistic addition of velocities. I hope that you have enjoyed this lecture as well as my earlier lectures on this particular topic because I have really enjoyed uh, making a video on this particular topic. That's it for today. I hope you learned something from it. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.